convicts, all under 22 years of age, from the ranks of the American collegiate system. Hi, I'm Don Lane, and good evening. Hi. But for now, let me fill you in on some of the salient facts that'll help you with tonight's game. It's international rules. The foul lanes are the same width as here at home. It'll be 20 minute halves, only five personal fouls are allowed instead of six, and the three-point line is just like the NBLs, much closer than the NBAs. Now these college kids are still in school, and believe me, the Palace at Auburn Hills, the home of the Detroit Pistons, will be loaded with pro scouts and general managers tonight looking to get a line on or snatch up these superstars of the future. Now, a quick explanation about the status of these college players. When a player goes to university over there, they enter with four years of eligibility up their sleeves. Now, those four years are referred to as freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. You'll probably hear the commentators refer to that often. For example, Brevin Knight, the starting point guard for the select team, is a sophomore at a Stanford University in California. The same school, by the way, where our very own basketball icon, Andrew Vlahov, toiled for four years and ended up as team captain. They're all here tonight, the multi-million dollar NBA hoopsters and coaches of Dream Team 3 and the enormously talented young college players who head into this one with visions of someday making it to the pros themselves and maybe even a dream team of the future. Let's get to it. Your commentators are Mark Brown and former New York Knicks and Washington Bullets All-Pro Bernard King. Well, the sportsmanship that you see in international competition, this is not exactly international competition as it's USA versus USA. And Bernard, most people don't give the college team a shot at winning, but there's a lot of other things that we can find out today. Well, there's certainly a lot of other things we can find out. Though. We, we know that in the NBA draft, uh, there were 17 underclassmen taken in that draft. And so the ability of these players have come into question by, by many. But I think these guys here today will play together as a unit They've been together for a while now, and it should really be an interesting ballgame. Well, as we look at what will be some matchups, it, it's truly men and boys in a lot of situations. His size is something that the USA senior team really has in, in, in an incredible advantage. Well, when you talk, look at the center position, you think about the fact that Lenny Wilkins, the coach of the Dream Team, has at his disposal starting today Sha Shaquille O'Neal. Akeem Elijah one from the Houston Rockets. And then you throw into that mix of David Robinson. You look at the other forwards, the power forward position of Carl Malone and Charles Barkley. Certainly, from a physical standpoint, the collegiate team is overmatched there. And I think, if anything, uh, the Dream Team will look to go inside very early in this ballgame. Well, of course, in international competition and by the rules of FIBA, you are able to play zone. You expect to see some of that against the Dream Team? Well, Mark, they don't play zones in the NBA, now do they? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that certainly the collegiate team will come out and zone up and try to take away the low post play of the Dream Team. And I think most importantly for the collegiate team is they're going to have to keep the Dream Team off the glass. Don't allow them to come in and dominate the offensive boards. And then once the Dream Team gets out in transition, make sure defensively you stop the basketball. Well, we take a look at the Nike starting lineups. Choosing a starting lineup from among these players is, I mean, that's got to be a coach's dream. You can't make any wrong decisions. But as we look at it across, you know, the forwards for the under-22 team, Boston Crozier from Providence. Paul Pierce will get the start at forward. He was just a freshman out of Kansas. Tim Duncan at center. Anthony Parker and Brevin Knight at the guards and of course they're going up against a couple of guys named Stockton, Miller, O'Neal, Malone and Hill. Got to be a thrill of a lifetime for these college players. It certainly is because when you look to the bench Mark you have Gary Payton come into the game. You have Scotty Pippen that you have to contend with. So it's really a remarkable lineup uh, for this dream team and I tell you I would love to have been there just to watch one of the practice sessions with the dream team. Yeah the, a collection of talent that you won't find too often, of course, Dream Team 1, which had Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, has to be it. But look at the rules comparison here. The length of the game is different. FIBA, just two 20-minute halves is what we'll be playing today. The shot clock, NBA, 24 seconds, now 30 in the FIBA rules. Player fouls, they'll only get five. And the three-point line, a little closer, more like the college line. So very comfortable shooting from there. The difference is you're going to have some tremendous defenders in your face for the college players. Getting ready to tip things up. Shaquille O'Neal and Tim Duncan will be jumping it up. 
And now we get a chance. A lot of general managers in the NBA will be watching this game, as you said, Bernard. They want to know how he can do in the NBA. Sure, he's got one more year in college, but this is a good litmus test for Tim Duncan. Well, he's a highly skilled player. He knows the game. I'm sure each of these collegians here took this afternoon probably is quite nervous knowing they, they're going against some of the finest NBA players in the world. Well, Reggie Miller gets free out front and knocks down a three to start things off. Well, Reggie wastes no time in putting up that three-point shot. With that three-point arc moving just a little bit, that's an area of the game that he certainly can excel at. Uh, Tim Duncan on top waiting for some cutters. Now Brevin Knight, he's going up against John Stockton. And a perimeter jumper is good from the outside, a three-pointer. So we've got an early tie answering the three-point shot from Reggie Miller. Well, Tim Duncan did a great job of sending the pick to allow that shot by Knight. And as we saw it in the opening footage, Carl Malone really loves that left block. And when he does, he likes to spin into the middle to get that shot off. Shaquille O'Neal sending it backwards. The crowd loves it. Now here is Duncan. Jump hook of the low block. Gets it down over O'Neal. That's the shot that Duncan likes. He likes to get that shot shooting over his left shoulder. It's going to be awfully tough for him to body up against Shaquille O'Neal. Now the rebound by Crozier, and now the under-22 team working against the Dream Team, knocked out of bounds by John Stockton. Here's a look at Brevin Knight off penetration, and uh, Shaquille O'Neal just sending that one right back. <laughs> Shaquille is one of those men that has the ability to provide great weak side help. Knight gets into the lane, throws it up soft off the top of the square. Brevin Knight with a beautiful move down the lane. Well, Brevin Knight is, is a player that has the ability to knock down the three as we saw earlier, but also he can penetrate and create a shot for himself. Excellent player. Showing no fear as he went right into the heart of the defense, and there is Carl Malone with a tremendous size and strength advantage on Austin Crozier, and Crozier will pick up the foul. Well, we, we simply expect that uh, Lenny Wilkins would start the game off trying to go into the big man down low and to see if they can probably get the team going with, with some shots in and around the basket. You get a look at Carl Malone's numbers, simply outstanding. You pencil him in for 25 points and 10 rebounds every night. Missed only four games in his entire NBA career that has spanned now 11 seasons. Malone is uh, certainly a very durable player, a very intense competitor, and he's highly committed, Mark, to his off-season conditioning program, and I think consequently he's missed very few games. Now here's Duncan again, quick double team, now back out to Brevin Knight, who fires, no good. Battle for the rebound, Shea Seals. Still scores off that offensive rebound, but it seems that Brevin Knight has the green light here this afternoon, Mark. And there's Malone driving the lane. Tim Duncan knocked it away, and Shaq took it back. Well, you just saw that Tim Duncan got sandwiched between Carl Malone and Shaquille O'Neal, and that's where your power comes into play when you're going up for a defensive rebound. So 9-8 is the score, just a one-point lead. But it's by the select team, so early on, they're matching the intensity of the Dream Team. You see a lot of movement on the, on the part of the, the Cleveland team, running a lot of picks, a lot of screen patterns, uh, not too much one-on-one -on -one play. Shaquille O'Neal out on the break, couldn't handle it, was knocked away by Parker, and now Brevin Knight looks to add to that lead, pulling up at the free throw line, and then finds Parker up and under. A tremendous find on behalf of Knight. He had a wide open 15 foot shot, but he found his teammate Parker up Will. So a quick five point lead on the turnover. The select team not looking real nervous. Under control is Knight. It's very interesting that the select team would come out and try to run. I think the idea in mind is that perhaps we can get some easy baskets in transition. Here's Brevin Knight again, penetrating at Will. Finding Shea Seals, who knocks down the 15-footer. Got to be a big confidence boost here for the select team. Well, anytime you have a guy at the point guard position that can find other people while he's in the air, it's to himself. Speaking of in the air, that time it was Grant Hill coming through the air to follow up the Shaquille O'Neal miss. Well, certainly the fans of uh, the Auburn Hills Palace are very excited to see Grant Hill, a member of the Detroit Pistons, uh, who is certainly a favorite of theirs. Tremendous all-around player as John Stockton comes away with the turnover off the loose ball. 
I'm sure Stockton has to be feeling pretty excited right now. Who did I pass the ball to? Carl Malone, Shaquille O'Neal, Grant Hill. Well, Shaq with a nice up and under move, but then blocked by Crozier on the help. Here comes the select team. Brevin Knight leading it. There is Parker for the finish. Tremendous find on the part of Brevin Knight. He's having an excellent game thus far in the first couple of minutes. A small player is Knight, just five feet ten, 155 pounds, but running the offense nicely. And there is Carl Malone off the feed. So that's a patented move, uh, Mark, of Carl Malone. He likes to start on that uh, free throw line area and then cut down the middle, and he loves to get that feed for a basket. Steal by Stockton on the entry. Out to Miller. Uses the glass and won't go down. Reggie Miller couldn't finish on that play, but Stockton really used his experience by dropping off of Brevin Knight once he picked up his pass and stole it. Well, Austin Crozier working on Carl Malone in the post. Carl Malone picks up the foul. You know, Malone has those quick hands, and that time reached in and got a piece of the arm. Well, that's one thing that uh, Malone loves to do to a low post offensive player. As we take a look at uh, Shaquille O'Neal, who was not able to complete that uh, rebound miss attempt. And you don't think Austin Crozier is going to be telling people about how he rejected Shaquille O'Neal? Well, that's certainly something he'll probably be bound to remember for a long time to come. So Crozier hits the first one. He is out of Providence. You see his numbers. You talk about Crozier. A, a lot of people like his abilities, Mark, but one of the questions that they have about Crozier is, is he willing to mix it up and take the ball to the basket as opposed to relying on the jump shot? So we have our first timeout in the first half. The select team leading the Dream Team. Somewhat of a surprising start in the Dream Team's first exhibition as they find themselves trailing by seven points to start the game against the USA Under-22 Select Team. Mark Brown along with Bernard King and a little surprised at how aggressive this uh, Under-22 team has come out? I'm not that surprised though, simply because I think it was uh, hammered home to this ball club in terms of select team prior to the game that we have to really come out and demonstrate to these pros that we are here to play, we expect to play aggressively, and we would like to win the basketball game here this afternoon. So it really is no surprise at all. They're off to a good start. You saw Duncan and Shaquille O'Neal. Much anticipated matchup. Duncan against any of these NBA players. Look at the select team's numbers shooting 80% against the Dream Team. And I tell you who's partly been responsible for that is Brevin Knight. When he's not scoring in the lane or hitting the jump shot, he's finding teammates for easy open shots. And we're talking about a guy who possibly next year may be one or two or three in terms of a, a point guard. Uh, Reggie Miller now inside to O'Neal. One-on-one -on -one with Tim Duncan takes him straight into the lane but can't finish. Well, it looks like Shaq's shot is just a bit short. He really doesn't have his legs in his two his shot right now, but I'm sure as he starts to get more into the flow, although he's not going to play 40 minutes tonight. <laughs> Brevin Knight off the screen, short on the jump shot. And here comes Stockton. Gets into the lane and finds Malone with a wraparound pass. And Austin Crozier had broken it up, but had a foot on the line when he had the ball. I'm sure for these dream teamers, it must be a little difficult, Mark. These are guys that are accustomed to playing 38 minutes a night. And uh, they're part of a group, which is the greatest team assembled, obviously. But they may only play 15 to 16 minutes. It'd be interesting to see how some of these players fare coming in off the bench. They'll be shuttled in and out for sure. We've got a foul away from the ball as Reggie Miller was trying to run Parker off a screen. These games will be called a bit more closely than an NBA game uh, in terms of the amount of contact that is permitted in and around the basket. Grant Hill picked up that foul, setting a screen for Reggie Miller. First look at Scotty Pippen coming off the bench, Bernard. Quite a luxury. Uh, quite, quite a luxury it is. Uh, Scotty Pippen obviously played uh, well into June in terms of through the NBA Finals, and he's been having some nagging injuries, but he's delighted to be here. Well, Crozier faces up from just inside the three-point arc, and Carl Malone's going to have to go out there. Crozier likes to shoot that perimeter shot. Well, one of the things that happens is once you start to put the ball on the floor and penetrate, it opens up the jump shot for you. Uh, here comes the select team. Toby Bailey just into the game, throws it away. Well, that kind of pass you can't take against the Dream Team is attempting to go cross-court with the basketball. Reggie Miller with lots of room from the baseline, can't hit the three. That's a rarity, watching Reggie Miller miss an open three-point shot. Duncan was there. Here's Toby Bailey. 
Three-pointer just behind the arc, so Bailey coming out aggressive. Yeah, I like Toby Bailey. He's, he's really an outstanding three-point shooter, but he also has the ability to put the ball on the floor and find teammates in transition basketball game. Great breakdown player, plays with a lot of aggressiveness right from the moment of his freshman year. Here's O'Neal finally getting on the board with a short jump hook over Tim Duncan. Well, Shaquille O'Neal, as you know, is a free agent right now. There were some questions about insurance, and I understand his insurance was doubled up in the event of injury. And another jumper from out top. Shea Seals, he's got six points already in the ballgame. I tell you what's really interesting as we see a foul called here. Uh, one of the interesting things is that both teams have been seen shooting the ball awfully well. And it's not because of a lack of defense. For the most part, it's been good defense players, uh, I have thought at least. Seems like the, the select team is getting their feet under them. Some nice rhythm on their shooting has come out very hot. As we get a look at Gary Payton and Charles Barkley checking into the game. It, quite a bit of depth and talent on this team. We'll see Charles in international competition has always come out ready to play. We'll see what he does here. Turnaround jumper is good from Pippen. That's Scotty Pippen's uh, move right there. He loves to turn around and give you that little spin move. And he's so tall that he can shoot it right over you because he elevates so high. Maurice Taylor just checked into the game, hits the 15-footer. He's out of Michigan. Well, he's considered one of the top three power forwards in the country. And we'll see going up against Charles Barkley in the post. There's Barkley straight in. Beautiful bounce pass for O'Neal. The ball won't go. Tim Duncan with the foul on Shaq. A great pass to the part of Barkley to find Shaq on the right low block. And as you take a look at this play, a, a Barkley as he finds his teammate, Shaquille O'Neal. Tim Duncan, as you can see, did not back away. He went for the block. There are a number of guys, Mark, that would have just backed off. Well, Tim Duncan may feel he's got something to prove. Take a little break now. Premier center in the country returning to college basketball. Many felt he would have been a lottery pick had he decided to come out. Oh, without a doubt. But I tell you the player, I, I think all, a lot of people should watch here uh, this afternoon, who's currently in the court is Maurice Taylor. Uh, he's a guy that's really fundamentally sound. Uh, he knows how to post up. He knows how to get into the lane and, and create fouls as we take a look at David Robson entering the ball game for the first time. Yeah, coming in, you've really identified Maurice Taylor as a guy that you like. You like his skills, his fundamentals. And Got a little athletic ability on top, so that bodes well. He knows the game, as you can see him posting now. Now back inside, the ball knocked away by Barkley. The 30 second clock really helps here to lead the team right now because you can see a little strong defense on the part of the dream team. There's a nice bounce pass from Brevin Knight as he found Skinner down low, who's well, fouled by Barkley. Well, that's what you have to do. If you're going to post up against the Dream Team, you must, you must attack the basket. You got a double foul there, a little bit of Barkley and Robinson. Take your pick. There's Brian Skinner. He comes out of Baylor. He'll be a junior this year. He goes to the line. He's just a 62% free throw shooter in college, but 60% from the field. So he's a guy who can get it down low and score the ball for you. Most of the shots, excuse me, Mark, tend to come from 10 feet in. He's not going to really give you that much. A developing player, nine rebounds a game. He's the Baylor career block shot leader. He's just played two seasons. It's the first. In terms of the NBA scouts, uh, he's considered one of the top 30 players in the country. But if he's going to excel at that next level, he's going to have to develop a perimeter game. Here's Payton into Barkley in the post, bothered by Maurice Taylor. Barkley surrounded by under 22 defenders, and he loses the ball. And David Robinson, in an attempt to get the ball back from Chauncey Billups, committed the foul. You talked about Grant Hill earlier, uh, tremendous talent, but he's also one of the most popular players in the world uh, when you consider that he, had, he was leading vote yet over the last two years for the NBA All-Star game. Well, Chauncey Billups out of Colorado doing the ball handling, and it's to Maurice Taylor, turnaround jump on the post, no good. 
Here comes the Dream Team on the run out. There is Pippen. Can't finish, but half the Dream Team led by Partley. And the Admiral just flushed that one back. Well, you see that they attacked that offensive glass, but it was a tremendous effort on the part of Peyton in pushing the ball up the floor and finding the Pippen. And that's the first time we saw them in earnest really push that ball up. Gary Payton replaced Glenn Robinson of Milwaukee, who was out with an injury. Toby Bailey hits his second three-pointer. He's got six points. Well, you're going to have to find Toby Bailey in that half-court half -court offense uh, simply because he can open up on you in shooting the three-point shot. Uh, Gary Payton feeding the Admiral in the post, gets to his left hand, and lots of contact inside Brian Skinner was not going to let David Robinson get that shot off on Molester. Well, the select team has come out of their zone defense and has now gone into a man-to-man. -man. David Robinson is one of the best at reading what the defense has to offer, but you see the weak side help. No easy shots in the lane. Well, David Robinson will step to the line seven feet one inch of just pure basketball talent. He's got a lot of impressive statistics, Bernard, but one that really blows me away is 13.60 on his SATs. <laughs> a very intelligent individual. Has a great number of interests away from the NBA as well. He plays the piano. So Chauncey Billups continues to handle the ball. He played a lot of forward at Colorado. He's only 6'3", but a powerful player going through the lane. Pulls up for the three, it's no good. Little trouble with the handle at Pippen, but Barkley comes away with it. Looking to set up his teammates, but the ball knocked out of bounds by the select team. Charles Barkley always thinks that he's a point guard. <laughs> he's this great power forward, but he always likes to get into the open floor in, in attempts to handle the basketball. Well, it's eight now top, looking to set the offense. Jumper on top, no good. Knocked out of bounds by Robinson. Despite the fact that the Dream Team is trailing at this point, they're staying with the game plan that Lenny Wilkins has given to them. And as you notice in the set of offense, they're going to their second and their third options. They're not shooting the ball very early. Maurice Taylor out front, looks down low. Jumper by Pierce is no good. Skinner had the rebound, but stripped away by Peyton. Select team is taking their time, looking to find someone cutting through the lane. They've been patient offensively, and it's Billups again out front. He'll try the lane, elevating high over Gary Payton and finishing. Tremendous body control on the part of Billups of enabling himself to get that shot off against Gary Payton. He's a complete player, has the only triple-double in Colorado basketball history. And there's the Admiral driving the lane, gets the shot to go. And the foul, David Robinson with excellent body control. David Robinson is a player that loves the high post area of the floor. And when you defend David Robinson in that area, he can take your right, he can take your left, and complete the three-point shot as well. Back at the free throw line is Robinson. After playing his four years at the U.S. Naval Academy, had to serve two years of naval service before playing in the NBA. Imagine what his career numbers would look like now with those two years. I uh, could not imagine. He's done a great job out in San Antonio. They've had some disappointments in the last few years in terms of the playoffs. Well, Charles Barkley getting involved with the officials. He thinks it's stream team ball. Well, as we take a look at Charles Barkley, there's been a lot of rumors circulating around Charles in terms of uh, where he's going to be traded to. Uh, he doesn't want to play in Phoenix any longer. And they talk about Houston as a possibility. Paul Pierce's jumper's no good. And now Gary Payton will lead the Dream Team up court. Charles Barkley, multiple fakes, gets the foul on Brian Skinner and finishes in Bernard. He's amazing with his ability to score in traffic at only about six feet five. Well, Charles Barkley, the thing about Charles, he has the ability to use his body, body very effectively and draw contact and still position himself to get the shot off. I played against this guy for about 12 years in the NBA. He was always a nightmare to play against. Takes the international competitions very seriously. We mentioned at the top of the show in Barcelona, he was the leading scorer for the USA team at about 19 a game. Came in and took care of business. So it's an eight point select team lead. It's been as high as 12. 
Well, you can see the defense starting to tighten up in terms of the Dream Team. They're now up on the basketball. They're starting to deny passes. And the defense of the Dream Team is becoming more serious. Phillips finds Paul Pierce. Sophomore to be from Kansas. Tough leaner in the lane. Doesn't go. Doing a great job battling for the loose ball. Skinner gets it back up and down. And the foul. Well, tremendous finish on the, on the part of Skinner to, to fight for that loose ball. He's a man of 6'10", 235 pounds. He's a sophomore. And uh, he fights really hard for this rebound. And he's able to take it away from David Robinson and goes up strongly to finish it. And that's really saying something because we talked at the top of the show about the tremendous size and strength advantage that the Dream Team has. Yet the intensity of the select team, they battled them on the glass. Well, rebounding, as you know, is about wanting the basketball and positioning, and Skinner did a very effective job of that. Now Mitch Richmond handling on top, inside to Robinson, moving to his right, stripped away, another turnover from the Dream Team. Here comes Phillips, great goal look inside, going for Maurice Taylor, but the foul on the play. Well, the select team is being very unselfish with their play in terms of looking up the floor. Here's an opportunity right now on the part of Phillips to take the shot, but no, look at the no-look pass down the lane. I love it. <laughs> Got a chance to show his stuff, and Phillips handling the ball a lot more than maybe we expected. Listed as a forward in the program, I guess more a testament to how well he can play inside, but showing he can run the floor and run the break just as well. Corey Carr checking into the game for the select team along with center Tim Young, number 19 out of Stanford. He's got his first touch right away and he is under duress. <laughs> Well, once again, you can see the defense taking up and starting to play out into the passing lanes. You see the help and recover on the pick and roll. And I, I think that you'll probably see the Dream Team starting to cut into this lead. Well, Shaq blocked the shot of Phillips in the lane. Here comes the Dream Team. Gary Payton with the finish from Scotty Pippen. That's where you really love Scotty Pippen as a player, where he has the ability to get there in the center of the floor and act as a point forward and assist off to a teammate. Jumper from the perimeter, Corey Carr out of Texas Tech. Bernard, he only started three games this past season, yet still averaged 16 a game coming off the bench. Well, he certainly was a catalyst for them. He was their spark. O'Neal with a wild shot inside. Well, what you'll probably start to see with Shaquille O'Neal, uh, he's drawing a lot of defensive attention down in the low block, and when he doesn't look for his shot, he can find someone for an open jumper. USA select under 22 team coach Mike Montgomery out of Stanford 10 years at the Cardinal 182 wins 120 losses in his 18 seasons as a collegiate coach has had just one losing season Shaquille O'Neal converts the first free throw Shaquille O'Neal had a great regular season then certainly was obvious disappointment for the Orlando Magic organization in terms of uh, the losses uh, to Chicago Bulls the free agent right now. There's been a lot of talk about him going to Los Angeles Lakers, possibly. The crowd at the Palace at Auburn Hills uh, witnessing a, a mild upset at least to start as the USA under-22 select team has the nine-point lead over the Dream Team with 7.38 to play in the first half. Mark Brown with you along with Bernard King, former NBA All-Star for a multitude of teams, most notably the New York Knicks and the Washington Bullets. And a little pressure to start things off from the Dream Team. Mitch Richmond in there tying up. I think what the select team has to be concerned uh, about at this point is don't let up emotionally. Continue with the intense play. Uh, the Dream Team, uh, certainly, they have not been in sync here this afternoon, and they're going to try to have to start developing some rhythm in their half-court sets. Well, Pete Lensinki doesn't even bother to jump with Mitch Richmond, and the Dream Team controls the tap. Charles Barkley dipping the shoulder, getting through the defense, finishing, and now looking for three. Well, that's the first play so far this afternoon, Mark, where one of the Dream Team members have gotten the ball in the low post, and as you take a look at this, with Taylor trying to defend, you don't see any of the weak side help as strongly and as quickly as yet seen in the preceding part of the first half. And as promising as a young player as 
Maurice Taylor is as we get a look at a battle there. And Mitch Richmond with some intensity looking for the steal on Lasicki that set up the jump ball. And Lasicki had just checked into the game and didn't expect that type of mugging to start off. And Barkley competes, completes rather the three-point play and more full-court pressure from the Dream Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it's Richmond bothering Lasicki, this time forcing it out of bounds off Lasicki. Well, during that time, uh, London and Wilkins obviously said to his team, let's start to apply some full-court man-to-man pressure. And we got a guy in the backcourt like Peyton and Mitchell Richmond who certainly could do that. There's Peyton off the cut. Pippen finds him. Excellent cut from Gary Peyton. Well, Peyton moves very well without the basketball. He can break you down when he has it, but he's always on the look for getting a ball when he's going through the lane. Sicky missing on the three-pointer. That's his specialty, 47%. Pass from Peyton was knocked away. Barkley ended up with it, ends up on the floor, but the ball goes through the basket, and he'll go back to the line. I would say Charles is just a little excited, wouldn't you say? It was a tremendous finish on the part of Charles as he was able to get into the lane, draw some contact, a tremendous find that was tipped. The ball was tipped, that Peyton passed, but it was really a nice find anyway, and Barkley was able to get his hands on it. Looks like a little acrobat there, don't you think? <laughs> Two times the ball was tipped, second time by Sam Oakey, and an arm in there is not going to stop Charles Barkley. Barkley is, is a hard worker. If, if he's playing for free, if he's playing in the NBA, if he's playing against a select college basketball team, it's all the same as Charles Barkley. Uh, he's enjoying himself in double figures already. More pressure from the Dream Team. They have, they have been harassing young Pete Lasicki out of Penn State. Well, as you know, when the game began on behalf of the select team, it started out with Brevin Knight in the backcourt at 5'10". Uh, he was a little bit of a matchup problem for the Dream Team, and he was able to get his team off to a good start. He has not re-ended the game since he's been taken out of the ball game. And Lasicki, a guy who's a natural off-guard, really more of a shooter, being exposed for a perhaps ball-handling weakness, at least against this type of pressure. And Lewis Bullock in the game to handle the ball. Corey Carr left his feet, had nowhere to go. Tried to bail out with a dribble, but called for the walk. Well, Corey Carr had Scotty Pippen running at him. It was a great idea at that moment to give him a little up fake. Nice time to take the ball along the baseline and penetrate. Look at the turnovers. Select team now has turned it over seven times to five for the Dream Teamers. Elijah Wan in the game. And the beautiful turnaround on the baseline spin. So the third wave of, uh, of substitutions <laughs> yields Anthony Hardaway and Akeem Olajuwon. Shot by the Dream on the Dream Team. Alasicki again with problems handling. Here comes Barkley. He throws it away. Lewis Bullock out of Michigan with the steal. He pulls up for the three and he hits. Tremendous shot. Really nice shot. Had Akeem Olajuwon challenging the shot but was still able to knock down the three. Nice shot on the part of Bullock. The Bullock plays for the Michigan Wolverines. Teammate of his, Maurice Taylor, joining him here on the U.S. Select Team. Forty-one forty. Select Team now with that one-point lead, courtesy of the Bullock jumper. Well, the Select Team has gone back into his own defense again and trying to take away some of the low post play by the part of the Dream Team. Inside out, beautiful dish from Pittman. But three seconds called. Akeem Olajuwon wasn't prepared to, to receive that ball, and consequently he thought Scotty was going to go up for the shot. <laughs> it would have been in position to get the offensive rebound. And what a casual, nonchalant pass. Delivered right on the money from Pippen. There's a look at Lenny Wilkins, the all-time winningest coach in NBA history. Over 1,000 wins, 23 seasons of coaching, 15 as a player. I'm sure... Lenny Wilkins is very pleased and excited about coaching this club, but uh, Mark, how do you determine about divvying up the minutes? How do you divide them? <laughs> well, you depend on uh, people putting their egos aside, I would assume here. Lenny Wilkins, an embarrassment of riches on that bench. Yeah, you have a good group of guys there, and, and I'm sure they all check their egos at the door. So now Lewis Phillips handling the ball. Well, you can see what that defensive pressure has done to the select team. Uh, the Dream Team is trailing by one point at this time. 
Blood pressure as Carmelo jumped out to double. Bullock will pull for three, and he was hit on the release. Well, you can see the defensive versatility of, of the Dream Team in terms of a kind player like Carmelo, who's extended 15, 20 feet away from the basket, but yet still he can defend you and move his feet very well out on the perimeter. Another look at Lewis Bullock will go to the free throw line. Bullock averaged just under 14 points a game in his freshman season at Michigan. Just shot the ball at 40%, but 35 from behind the arc. Played most of this season as a two guard, but looks to be a point guard in the future. Here's a look at his numbers. Those assists will go up as he handles the ball more. So he's got three attempts. He's already hit two. The look also has some international experience. He's a member of the 1995 U.S. Olympic Festival team. So a four-point select team lead. Jumper from the perimeter by Pippen is no good. Peyton in the lane now kicks it out to Malone. Cross-court pass is stolen by Lewis Bullock. Now up court at Sam Oakey. Cross-court pass for Corey Carr, who drains the three. That's his specialty. Come off the bench and launch it. Well, that's been very successful for the select team so far here in the first half. It's to push the ball up the court on turnovers, try to find something in transition. If not, take the wide-open three-point shot. And pretty hard away, fires it inside the Pippen. Ball is knocked away. The Dream Team will keep it. You know what I think is happening right now, Mark, is uh, the, the Dream Team is guilty of a bit of overpassing. There's so many great players on the floor, and they're all trying to make sure that they play unselfishly. And consequently, they're passing up what I think is some very easy shots. Shots that perhaps they'd normally take for their own teams. They're looking for something better. Well, Akeem Olajuwon had the ball down low. A foul, though, on the floor before the shot. And the other thing uh, we have to remember is that the lane is much wider along the baseline area than your traditional NBA lane. And we saw earlier where uh, Hakeem Olajuwon was called for three seconds. Under an NBA rule, he would not have been in the lane. It's the lane is not as wide. To give you an idea of the difference, the NBA lane is 16 feet wide at the baseline. It's 19 feet, 8 inches wide in international play. So an even wider differential from the NCAA, which is just 12. It makes all the difference in the world. Okay, we're live at the Palace of Auburn Hills, the USA under 22 select team versus the dream team. Mark Brown along with Bernard King bringing you the action, and it's been a surprising effort from the select team as they have led throughout the first half against uh, Dream Team 3, as it's been dubbed. Anthony Hardaway now picking up the foul. Well, Anthony Hardaway finally has entered the game, a member of the Landro Magic. Tremendous uh, perimeter defender, but he was guilty of using his hands there, being caught in a cookie jar. Well, Anthony Hardaway and Shaquille O'Neal making up one of those tremendous duos, and from what we're hearing, that duo is somewhat in jeopardy as Shaquille O'Neal uh, will be a free agent on July 9th and we keep hearing the Los Angeles Lakers as making the appropriate moves to perhaps prepare to make an offer that Shaq cannot refuse. Well, as an unrestricted free agent, Orlando Magic is in a position where they would not receive anything in return for such a great player like Shaquille O'Neal. Seven points select team lead over the Dream Team. First half winding down, another turnover from the Dream Team. Open court is Carr slashing, but stripped away by Reggie Miller. Nice changeover on the part of Carr, though going from right to left, but just could not finish in the lane. Hardaway was double teamed in the post. He found Miller, who can't find the range, and a good run out here. Nobody back, and Corey Carr goes the distance. Well, I'm a little surprised at that play, Mark, simply because when the ball went up on the glass on the part of the Dream Team, nobody attacked offensive glass. Consequently, they were all caught in the paint. Easy bucket on the part of the select team. So the lead is now nine. Hardaway from out top for three, won't go down. Big rebound by Scottie Pippen to keep it alive. Now Pippen trying the lane. 
And the ball was knocked away by Gino Carlisle, but he'll be whistled for the foul. Carlisle will be a junior at Northwestern. Well, you see the penetration here on the, on the part of Carl where he was stripped away from the ball by Carl Malone. I'm surprised you have not seen more three-point shots now on the part of the Dream Team. You see all the black jerseys in the paint, and consequently the select team gets out on the fast break and say, hey, we got another deuce. To say the least, the select team has taken advantage of their opportunities here early against the superstars of the Dream Team. Scotty Pippen misses the second of two free throws, and Brevin Knight back into the game will have the ball handling chores. He was very impressive to start things off going against John Stockton. Well, two minutes and 48 seconds left in this first half. The select team was looking to slow the pace down. Let's get the ball inside and see if we can work from the inside out. Tim Duncan back in the game, moves to his left, shoots back with his right. Akeem Olajuwon called for the foul. Akeem was called for the foul on that particular play, but in looking at Tim Duncan closely, he got into the lane very nicely, but he started to fade just a bit. And when you fade, he's 6'10", you cut your height down. Instead of fading, I would like to have seen him go into the basket a little bit more off his shoulder and take the ball to the rim. Tremendous talent, though. We'll see his collegiate career consensus All-America, the only one who didn't opt out to go to the NBA. He will be a senior at Wake Forest back to terrorize ACC coaches for one more season. Well, he promised his family, uh, his mother, I understand, that uh, he would not leave until uh, he received his degree. 52-42 the score as the Dream Team will inbound the ball. You saw John Stockton and Grant Hill in your picture. Both those gentlemen started this ball game. John Stockton having a little bit of a hard time with Brevin Knight, who's his matchup. Both those guys going against each other now. Well, Stockton, as you can recall in the playoffs, had, had some problems with Seattle in terms of like, keeping up with uh, Peyton, Gary Peyton, that is. So, lately he's had some problems with quick guards. Good aggressive defense by the select team. And a rebound by Sam Oakey gets the outlet pass. The select team has done a great job of rebounding the basketball off the defensive glass and not permitting the Dream Team to dominate on the offensive boards. Gino Carlisle off the Duncan screen, pushes off and now back inside to Duncan. Carlisle can't control the handle, but it gets to Duncan anyway. Baseline jump hook is blocked by Olajuwon. That would have been a good opportunity on the part of Tim Duncan to turn and face. Uh, you can see the little pin down move here where John Stockton is just knocked off there on the screen. He can't get around the screen, try and go through it. Shea Seals kicks out. The Duncan for a three-pointer. We didn't think he had that type of range. Well, Duncan is demonstrating that, hey, if I can't get it going inside against a man like Akeem Olajuwon, I'll step out and force him to defend the jump shot. Now Stockton probing the zone. The reversal gets the ball to Reggie Miller. Hit his first jumper to start a 3-0 lead and hasn't hit a shot since. Well, I think the short three-point line is bothering Reggie Miller, don't you think? <laughs> it's too close. <laughs> Nice look inside. Up fake by Shea Seals, but he walked. And the Dream Team, a little bit of a scoring drought, have not hit from the field in the last five minutes, 20 seconds. They trail now by a dozen. Well, the Dream Team at one time was able to cut into that lead and actually got it down to one point, and Lenny Wilkins elected to go to his bench, and they're flowing a rhythm change. Well, John Stockton barely draws iron on the open jumper. We're now inside one minute to play in the first half. An impressive display by the under-22 select team against the awesome and powerful Dream Team. Well, this certainly comes as a surprise. I didn't expect uh, the select team to be up by 14 points. Brevin Knight picking the pocket of John Stockton. And Brevin Knight, he makes a, a living doing that. He's got the school record as far as steals, 215 of them for Stanford. Well, he certainly has demonstrated here today, you know, with his quickness and what kind of skills and ability he certainly has. You can see the frustration on John Stockton as he threw the ball away. And the bench, the under-22 select team, really enjoying this one. 
Anthony Parker greeting his teammates on the bench, and Brevin Knight has really done a tremendous job getting in the lane, setting people up, That's right. and with the quick hands. Well, he's a hard-nosed player, and uh, he's, he has a reputation of being a tremendous defender, and uh, he's come out here this afternoon and said, hey, I can play with these guys out here tonight. Again, Knight in the lane. This time he loses the handle. Grant Hill tried to save it, but he was on the end line. And the select team, again, will have chance for the final opportunity. I think Lenny Wilkins is saying him to himself, well, there's always the second half, fellas. Shea Seals from three, knocks it down as time runs out. So the select team with a brazen first half effort, Shea Seals has three three-pointers. That last one opening up the biggest lead of the game for this select under-22 team. And not a lot of people gave them a chance to be in this game at the half. Not only, Bernard, are they in this game, but they've got a nice lead, I don't dare say comfortable, at this stage of the game. 59-42, to 42, a 17-point lead. The Dream Team, that's right, the Dream Team is down. Here, the USA select team, very impressive. Shea Seal starting the game. He's got 14 points. Nine of those are on three three-pointers. Corey Carr, Tim Duncan, and Bailey rounded out. Barkley's got nine to lead the dream team, Bernard. But we're really looking at a team that built a lot of confidence in that first half, these college all-stars. There's no question about it. They were a club that came into this game. Uh, a lot of people doubting whether they had the ability to even stay with the Dream Team. And it was just a question, they thought at least, of how many points the Dream Team would win by. But as you see in this first half, they came out ready to play, played well defensively, did a great job in transition as well as a half-court play. And right now, the Dream Team has to overcome a 17-point deficit. And we're not talking about a 24-minute second half here. We're talking about a 20-minute second half with a 30-second clock. Can they overcome? Excellent point. There'll be much fewer possessions, obviously, because of the fewer minutes. But you mentioned the clock. They can stretch that 30 seconds per possession if they choose instead of 24, which is what the NBA players are used to. So in essence, you're saying this 17-point deficit, much bigger, really, than a normal NBA deficit of 17 would be at halftime. Absolutely. I think you'll see a bit more intensity on, on the part of the Dream Team. These guys are, are thorough professionals. They don't like to be embarrassed and not suggest that they are, but they have certainly been outplayed in the first half, and they're going to have to make a change uh, if they're going to win this basketball game. Hard to imagine the Dream Team giving up 63% shooting. That's exactly what they did in the first half as... The college team of select under-22 All-Stars shot it at that rate. Dream Team, of course, at 50%, but the big thing for the select team, 6 of 10 from behind the arc. Spin move in the lane by Olajuwon gets things started quickly for the Dream Team. Well, telltale sign that the Dream Team immediately went to Akeem Olajuwon in the low post, and they're looking to get right back into this game quickly. Austin Crozier gave it back to Brevin Knight. He's been impressive. Oh, he's been the catalyst for the select team. I really like his game. Look at him. He finds his teammate right there on the perimeter and knocks down the shot by Austin Crozier. Crozier at 6'9", but really strength of his game is that touch from the perimeter. 61-44. Take a look at all the white jerseys around the basketball, however. Olajuwon tried to find Barkley after the spin move, bounced it off Barkley's chest, took it back and scored. So four quick points from Akeem Olajuwon to start the second half. Crozier in the lane, multiple fakes, but can't get it over O'Neal. Check that Olajuwon. Here is Pippen on the break with the finish. That's more like it for the Dream Teamers. That is with authority by Scottie Pippen. Attack the rim. It can elevate very, very well. Shea Seals gets rejected by Olajuwon. Well, as you can see, Mark, in the first two possessions by the select team, who blocks the shot? Hakeem Olajuwon, as we take a little look at this feed by Gary Payton to the man, Scottie Pippen. Well, how many times have we seen this throughout Scottie Pippen's career in the NBA? He is just money in the bank on the break. 
It's just a joy to watch. Now a jump ball after the tie-up controlled by the Dream Teamers. Mitch Richmond is in the ball game. Haven't heard much from him. Mitch Richmond excels in a half-court set when teammates are setting picks and he can spot up and nail the three-point shot. That time, Richmond gets into the lane, draws defenders, and is fouled on the pass-off. So not shooting, it'll be dream team ball out of bounds. You but may recall, Mark, that uh, in 1988, Mitch Richmond were, and David Robinson was a member of that Olympic team that were beaten in the Olympics. Won a bronze medal that year. Bronze medal and Mitch Richmond just refusing to display it. He's very upset that uh, all they got was the bronze. So he's got a chance to come back and get himself some gold. Golden opportunity. Of course, that was the last time NBA players were not allowed to participate in the Olympic Games. Now Pippen on the move, setting up Richmond. Good defense by Anthony Parker. And now Olajuwon from the triple team out to Richmond. Can't knock it down. Barkley was battling inside with Austin Crozier. And it's one thing to put a body on Charles Barkley. It's quite another to, to keep him away from the basketball. Well, Barkley loves rebounding. And when a shot goes up, he always makes sure that he's in position before the shot is taken, placed underneath the rim to get the rebound. So Gary Payton tries the lane, backing in Brevin Knight, getting his own rebound. And now Mitch Richmond sets up Pippen, stripped by Paul Pierce. Gary Payton played awfully well in the NBA Finals against the Chicago Bulls. Tremendous series. Let's take a look at the Dream Team bench here. They don't look too excited. So Pippen will go to the free throw line and if we got to find something wrong with Scottie Pippen's game, this is the only thing that I can think of. He, has, he shoots under 70% from the free throw line. That's the only thing I can think of. You're, you're absolutely right. He's one of those players that have very few weaknesses, if any. And uh, it's just really a matter of concentration and, and the form that you use when you're in the free throw line. It's a free throw. So 61-50, the USA select team has seen its lead shrink from 17 at the half down to 11. Crochier open underneath and the strong finish. Somebody lost track of Austin Crochier. Well, if you're gonna go to the basket, you must attack the basket strongly. And a lot of people wondered whether or not Crochier had the heart to really power the ball home. He certainly does. Now Elijah on in the post, working on Duncan. As you notice, every other possession, the ball is going in through Hakeem Olajuwon. Scotty Pippen hits the three-pointer as he tries to bring the Dream Team back. A much improved three-point shooter this season, shot at a 39% during the regular season. Well, a lot to be uh, said because it's Michael Jordan. Jordan obviously draws so much defensive attention, and when he gets that help, Pippen's alive. Using glass, Shea Steeles has got it going today. I Did he call glass, he, Mark? He better have, because I don't think he could have meant it from that angle. <laughs> Finger roll is no good. Dunk it away with the rebound. Hard foul by Gary Payton, and Crochier will go to the free throw line. Well, select team has really gotten out into transition and beat the dream team down the court as we take another look at that shot off the glass. Even Scotty Pippen has to smile about that one. It's got to have you shaking your head. You're already down by double figures, and to have shots like that go... But I love the aggressiveness we've seen from Shea Seals. He had 14 in the first half, 17 now, as Crochier hits the first of his two free throws. Well, he shows that he's, uh, Seals, that is, that he's an outside shoot, but he can also take the shot with the defender in his face. Crochier gets them both to go. Crochier's having a good game. He's getting to the line, he's hitting the shot outside, he's also getting to the basket. Scotty Pippen off the fake. Tries to go glass. Anthony Parker will pick up the foul. Got a piece of the arm on Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen is the master of using the backboard in terms of taking a bank shot from, from the wing. And I, I can tell you, Mark, that's not a very easy shot to take when you're 15 feet out. And he has gone on record as he really works that. He likes to take it from that angle. And Probably nobody uses the glass quite as often as Scottie Pippen does on those little in-between shots. Oh, well, he's really incorporated to his game nicely. 
I'm surprised you don't see more pressure on the basketball by Gary Payton. And Brevin Knight drives right by him. Beautiful help by Olajuwon to knock it away. Here comes the dream team. Mitch Richmond fires for three. It's not there. Duncan away with the rebound. And now the select team coming back. Crochure. Looks like he committed the offensive foul. A little bit out of control there. The 6'9 guy running the break. He's never really able to get the ball totally under control as you watch this block by Hakeem Olajuwon. The third block this half by the Dream. Well, that may be the definition of the difference between the Pac-10 and the NBA. Brevin Knight able to just drive down that lane freely, but when it comes to putting it up off the glass, big fellow was waiting. Well, at 5'10", you have to learn to use the rim a bit more. Don't elevate so soon. Take the ball underneath the basket. Reverse and get a layup out of it. Mitch Richmond still looking for his first hoop. Won't go. Charles Barkley banging his way inside. No call, and the select team comes away. Knight again in the lane. This time finds Corey Carr. Back to Brevin Knight for the 18-footer. Over the top of the backboard, Dream Team ball. 15.46 to play in the second half, and Mark Brown along with Bernard King, and we expected some intensity from that USA Select under-22 team, but I don't think anybody could have expected this far into the game, still with a significant lead. No one could have anticipated this, and I tell you, Mark, all the Olympic team basketball competitors around the world has to be looking at this game and say, maybe we stand a chance after all. Well, they didn't start practicing together until July 1st, so about four days worth of practice, and I guess I'm looking for excuses here. <laughs> yes, there's strong teams team. out there uh, for the Olympics in terms of uh, Croatia and Lithuania. It should be really interesting. Of course, basketball around the world has improved just drastically over the last 20 years. You mentioned Lithuania, many foreign players now starting to break into the NBA and really make their mark. Now, loose ball down low, Charles Barkley battling for the ball. He felt he got a tie up there. Yeah, he's a little upset about that call. He felt that he had the ball and he was fouled a problem in most cases. Anytime you see Charles Barkley complaining about a call against a team like the select team, it has to tell you, Mark, that they're trailing. Well, to add a little perspective here, as Duncan shoots another three-pointer, doesn't go. And for the, actually, Scotty Pippen, that was on the ground trying to keep his dribble. And Corey Carr will be called with the foul. A little perspective on the USA in Olympic competition. The all-time Olympic record is 98 and 2 for the men's basketball team. Both losses to the former Soviet Union, one in the 72 finals, still controversial. That's right. And the other in 88, as you mentioned, as the USA won the bronze, they lost in the semifinals to the Soviet Union. Here's Brevin Knight off the turnover as an afterthought puts the ball up, but won't get it down. Here comes Scottie Pippen in traffic and lays the ball off. Won't go down. Akeem Olajuwon gets it, and Gary Payton very frustrated that he missed the layup. Well, both teams, as you can see in the last couple of tough possessions up and down the court, unable to complete easy shots, layups in fact. Gary Payton on one end, he goes in, he penetrates, looks like he has a shot, goes it out for a turnover. Reverend Knight comes down the other end of the floor, makes a nice move. He's not able to complete it. Uh, Akeem Olajuwon gets to the line, though, with a chance to cut into the lead. Oh, Olajuwon just... A wonderful player and a wonderful story. In his first eight seasons, averaged 22 points a game. And over his last four, that would be his ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th seasons, his career high four years as far as scoring the basketball, getting better with age. Oh, no question about it. The spin moves by Akeem Olajuwon when he's in a low post, the fadeaways, the drop step. He just has a total package. Jim Duncan shot is blocked by Olajuwon. Yeah, he at least changed the shot of Maurice Taylor. Second half, Bernard, Olajuwon's come out and made a stance defensively. Yeah, I think it was a key that Lenny Wilkinson elected to start Olajuwon in the second half because certainly he has the quickness and the ability to get to the ball when the ball penetrates the lane in the low post. Good cutting and ball movement as Shea Seals finds himself in trouble. Olajuwon away with the steal. Now Gary Payton will survey things and finds Charles Barkley running the court. Puts it up with the left hand over Tim Duncan. 
Nice find by Gary Payton. Barkley, as you know, runs the floor from baseline to baseline quicker than probably any big forward in the league other than Carl Malone. He did a very effective job of getting to the basket right there and scoring for two. And he's still not satisfied. He wanted the foul as well. You know Barkley. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a generous guy. He doesn't mind giving the officials that little extra help during the game to help them do their jobs. Now, Brevin Knight again on the move. Stopped by Barkley momentarily. Shea Seals throws up a wild one inside. Duncan saves the possession. Corey Carr has it knocked away by Mitch Richmond. Select team will keep the ball. You really don't like to see a player elevated in the air unless he's going to shoot the ball. But Brevin Knight has a knack of elevating and finding an open man, even when there's really no one to pass the ball to. The gap may be only a small gap, but he finds a teammate with, with, with the ball. Now Maurice Taylor misses the 15-footer. Another offensive rebound from Duncan. Maurice Taylor now stripped by Pippen. Here comes the Dream Team. They've got numbers, and Pippen just goes through by himself. Well, he was able to split Bullock and night he was it faked his right got through a gap into the lane and scored two points nice bounce pass entry from maurice taylor into duncan a foul on the floor one of the problems that the select team is experiencing right now they're becoming very stationary in their half court set as you can see the dream team drops back into the lane you see that little fake there and shoulder move by the part of Pippen he's able to complete the two points but the defense of the select team of dream team has become much more aggressive here in the second half mark. right on cue Gary Payton the glove comes up with a steal here comes Pippen behind the back to Barkley extra pass to Miller and now Olajuwon ends up with it and finishes with the foul. Did you see that pass by Scotty Payton? What a pass, wraparound pass behind the back. A thing of beauty. It didn't seem like there was anywhere to put that ball. Yet he found a way to put it right into the hands of Barkley. As you can see, Pippen handles the ball as well as any forward in the league. A little behind the back pass to Barkley. Barkley finds Miller. Well, he wasn't able to complete the play, but he has a key Olajuwon. He loves contact and he completes the basket. Akeem Olajuwon, born in Nigeria, became a U.S. citizen in 93, and it has been the dream's dream to play on a dream team like this. Making the most of it here in the second half, trying to bring them back from a 17-point halftime deficit. Now the USA dream team, there's Mitch Richmond peering into the huddle. He's seen his team come back from a 17-point halftime deficit. They trail now just 68-63, 13-12 to go in this ball game. A very strong statement by the under-22 USA Select team. Many of these college players may not have been heard of because so many underclassmen stars have come out into the NBA, into the NBA draft. But these are the guys who will be the superstars of college next season. And they've come out, it seems like, with something to prove. Oh, uh, there's no question about it. It's a grand opportunity for them to find out what their strengths and weaknesses are against the greatest players that the world has to offer. Dream Team's run is now 10-0. Good press break there by the select team as Lewis Bullock handling the ball, handling chores at point. And Gary Payton will be whistled with a foul out front. Well, you see the defensive pressure that's being applied by Gary Payton all the way up at half court, trying to force them to use up some of that shot clock and to force a turnover. If anybody can do it, it's the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year, nicknamed the Glove for his tight defense. He's come up with a couple steals here in the second half. Well, if you think about it, uh, in Hakeem Olajuwon, Gary Payton, Scotty Pippen, you talk about the three of the best defenders in the entire league. Bullock on the run, hits the tough leaner. Tough shot by Bullock to get that runner off. But you got to get back or Scotty Pippen will leak out and score on you just like he did there. Well, the Dream Team is now starting to push the ball up the floor a bit more in terms of transition, trying to get some easy baskets. 12-20 to play in the game, five-point lead for the select team. Now Maurice Taylor outside will shoot the jumper over Barkley. It won't go. Now Peyton setting things for the dream team. Look for the team of one possibly. Charles Barkley behind the back and then fades and finds the key. I said look for a Kim one possibly. But that was a tremendous pass on part of Barkley after he put the ball behind his back, gets in the lane, finds 
Elijah from the easy two. The dream team within three as they continue to creep back into this ball game. Well, it's been done with defense, and uh, that's what wins basketball games, defensive rebounding. And here in the second half, you've started to see a, a little more dominant dream team. Lewis Bullock using the screen of teammate from Michigan, Maurice Taylor. You want to see how these guys now respond to a little pressure. Now Paul Pierce got the shot off as the clock expired. First time we heard that buzzer today. Now Reggie Miller, he hit his first shot of the game for a three and hasn't scored since. The dream shake and fade away, no good, but Sir Charles is there. Can't control, losing it out of bounds. Well, it'll be very interesting to see what happens if the Dream Team is able to garner the league and how the select team responds to that by trailing. They really haven't been in that situation. They trailed 3 0 to start and 40 to 39 momentarily late in the second half, in the first half, rather. Paul Pierce from the perimeter, no good, but Maurice Taylor with the big follow. -up. Tell that 6'8", 230, use all of it right there and rebound that one right through the rim. Nasty. Well, you like his skills, but sometimes it pays to just be plain awesome physically, and there it was with a follow-up. Elijah Watt continuing to be a force here in the second half. Really has been the heart and soul of the Dream Team effort here in the second half as three or four block shots to go along with eight points here in the second half. Well, Hakeem is not going to overpower you, but he certainly understands and knows the game, and he uses all of that understanding very well. Bullock off the penetration finds Paul Pierce, who draws the foul on Elijah Wan. Well, that's what you have to do. When, you, when you're going up against a man that's a great shot block, as you look at this jump shot on the part of Pierce, and the rebound with authority in terms of Teller. He was up there, wasn't he? <laughs> he was, and here's another look. He just comes free, no body on him at all. It's just great timing on the part of uh, Maurice Taylor. Look like you, Mark, in your old days. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. The big Mo Taylor hasn't really hit those jumpers today, though he does have that touch out to about 14 feet, but one of the premier power forwards in college basketball as we look at Paul Pierce going to the line after that strong take to the basket. He saw his age, he's 18, he's only a freshman, and when you go into the lane against a man like Hakeem Olajuwon, who you know is an outstanding shot blocker, you have to go in with the idea that you're going to dunk the basketball and force him to challenge you and block that shot. Now Pierce just 0 for 5 from the field, but he's the Big 8 co-freshman of the year along with Chauncey Billups of Colorado, who's also in this on this USA Select Team. Four-point lead for the Select Team. Pippen losing the handle, and here comes the Select Team, but there's the claw. And now Pippen, so a little back and forth action. Nobody wanted the ball. Pippen ends up with the easy jam. Well, Gary Payton, that is, shows you why he's the Defensive Player of the Year. He reads the offense very well in transition. He comes up with the steal. Now Pierce found himself in trouble. Jumper from Bullock is no good from three. Here comes Reggie Miller. Trying to give the Dream Team a tie or the lead with the three. It's Akeem from on top. Will not go. First time this afternoon we've seen the pairing of David Robinson and Akeem Olajuwon. Now that should be against FIBA rules. <laughs> they may just bring in Shaquille O'Neal and have the three trio there up front of Shaquille and Hakeem and David Robinson. And why not add Carmelo in the backcourt as we take a look at the steal by Gary Payton and the finish by Scotty Pippen. Gary Payton had a tremendous postseason as he and Sean Kemp led those Seattle Sonics all the way to the NBA Finals, taking Chicago to six games. Brian Skinner misses from 17. That's the jumper that you said he'll need to develop to round out his game. Now the dream team will set. You know, Scotty Pippen has become the prototype uh, forward in the league in terms of the guy that, a player that has the ability to get the rebound, jump start the offense by pushing the ball up the floor in transition. And Reggie Miller's struggles continue as he airballed that last three. Grant Hill must be entering the game. <laughs> but can tell by the applause. And there is Grant Hill. Just two years in the NBA, he's already made a tremendous impact. He 
David Robinson, the big left-hander, getting around Brian Skinner. Well, Skinner permitted Robinson to post him much too low in the lane, and, and we allow a man to get that close to the basket that has the talent that Dave Robinson has to score two points. Well, the Dream Team has broken that 17-point deficit. They tied it at 73. There is Peyton in the lane. Bullock thought he stripped him, but he'll be called with a foul. 25 run on the part of the Dream Team. Check that, that was Chauncey Billups who will be called with the foul, not Lewis Bullock. Billups has checked into the game. Look at Mike Montgomery, his squad has done a tremendous job against this much more talented Dream Team 3 squad made up of basically the best players in basketball. Without a doubt. But I think this bodes well for the select team, the fact that they were able to come in here and to be so competitive against a great basketball team, I think it says a great deal for the future of the select team. Now the Dream Team taking the lead, their first lead since 40-39 to 39 in the first half. See if they can hold it, and we'll see how this young select team reacts to now being behind in the second half. You don't see much movement in the select team's offense. So earlier in the first half, we saw a lot of picks. Uh, the time clock is winding down. And here comes the steal, and Grant Hill can't control. It was a nice job by Chauncey Billups to give Grant Hill problems. And he couldn't control the ball, so the turnover from the select team is wasted, but the dream team has come all the way back from down by 17. The dream team has had its hands full today with the USA select under 20. Two team as we see the game summary 17 point lead at the half as the USA select jumped out since then the dream team has outscored the select team 32 to 15 and a lot of it's been a pickup of defensive pressure in that second half by the dream teamers tremendous defensive pressure shot blocking on the part of Hakeem Olajuwon as well as Scotty Pippen pushing the ball out in transition and uh, finding two points for other people underneath so Chauncey Billups handling the ball now for the select team. Trailing by one here. Chauncey Billups, member of Colorado. Little two-man game. Billups has the three if he wants it. He does and knocks it down. Well, shows you why he was co-rookie of the year. Paul Pierce, tremendous outside shooter. Little two-man action going right now between Grant Hill and David Robinson. Grand Hill is not that outstanding in three-point shooter, Mark. But uh, when you have to, when you're forced to double team David Robinson in the low post, Grand Hill then has the ability to step in and take that little 17 foot jump shot. Get right into his range. You mentioned just a just about a 19% three-point shooter. And again, in a guy who has no weaknesses, much like Scottie Pippen, that's the one area that probably we'd point to for improvement in Grand Hill's game. And, I have very little doubt he can make that step. <laughs> very explosive player. David Robinson is perfect from the field. Three for three. Hits the free throw. There's a look at Brevin Knight, the diminutive point guard from Stanford who had a major impact on this game in the first half as he was able to really jumpstart that select team's offense. Can you imagine the competition in Western Conference if Shaquille O'Neal actually joins the Los Angeles Lakers <laughs> with David Robinson, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Shaquille O'Neal all in the same conference? Unbelievable. The power broker big man of the West would be amazing. Well, we have a tight game right now, 76 all. And Phillips working on Peyton. Carl Malone bumped him out of the way. The turnover, there's the lob for Grant Hill. Just can't control. And that was reminiscent of Grant Hill's freshman year at Duke in the NCAA Finals. First half where they just launched one, it seemed like, to the top of the backboard. Well, you see Gary Payton here. He's able to come off the steal and in transition. He's looking to find Grant Hill, but the ball was lobbed just a little too far out of his reach. He might have thought he was throwing that one to Sean Kemp. <laughs> And a whistle on the play. Well, speaking of Sean Camp, a lot of people thought possibly he was going to wind up as a replacement for Glenn Robinson, uh, who was injured from the Milwaukee Bucks. Gary Payton ultimately took his place. He felt the need for a little more point guard play. And Payton has got plenty of play here in the second half. But we take a look now at John Stockton giving Payton a break. 
And Peyton really gave John Stockton fits in the Western Conference Final. Some may have looked at it as maybe a passing of the torch between point guards in the West. Well, you can't certainly, you certainly cannot take away from the career that John Stockton has had. A, he's had a great career. Uh, but Gary Payton is starting to emerge, I think, as uh, the top point guard out there in the West. And certainly with his play in the NBA Finals, I don't think too many can, people can argue that point. Well, Lenny Wilkins has had the same look on his face from the outset. Certainly more comfortable than when he was down 17, but uh, not 100% comfortable. A lot of basketball here left to play at the Palace. Well, Lenny Wilkins has always been a calm type of personality, and uh, he's not one to jump up and down in terms of yelling at any of the players, but he's considered one of the finest coaches in NBA history, and there's no doubt about it, he is a great coach. And before he gave up playing for good, he spent four seasons as a player coach for two different teams in the NBA. So that speaks to a lot of the talents, physically and in, as far as intelligence is concerned. This is a, a remarkable individual, is Lenny Wilkins. Well, despite the run that the Dream Team has made here in the second half, the select team is still leading by three points in this ballgame. Well, Austin Crozier trying to create off the dribble an animated Mike Montgomery. <laughs> Doesn't feel like he's getting a fair shake from the officials in the second half. Beautiful move down the lane by John Stockton. Scoop off glass. Great move set up by his teammate Carl Malone, who came up in the key, top of the key area to set a pick for John Stockton. Forced the defense left and was able to get through and knock down the basket. Well, Austin Crozier working in the post. Picks up the foul on Carl Malone, non-shooting. Well, I don't think it's any surprise, Mark, that at this juncture of the game that you would have John Stockton and Carl Malone on the floor at the same time. Simply because they're accustomed to playing with one another. Well, and they have been a tandem in the NBA, it seems like forever. It's only been 11 years combined. Another long-range three from Shea Seals. That's a big-time shot there. <laughs> no conscience from Seals. If he's comfortable, he'll launch it. Well, I would love to have had that range when I played. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shea Seals has really shown us something tonight. He's got 20 points. We've got him for five three-pointers. And it's amazing how smooth he is when he elevates from behind the arc. A lot of three-point shooters shoot shoot a set shot from out there, not Chase Seals. Well, he's a tremendous shooter. He doesn't drift when he goes up to take that shot. I tell you what's so amazing, this Dream Team here, I've, I've played against every single member of the Dream Team uh, during the course of my NBA career, all been in Grand Hill. Never got a chance to play against him. Bernard King knowing what it's like to go head-to-head -head with these NBA superstars, many a Hall of Famer out there on the on the floor for the Dream Team. So he knows what these college All-Stars are up against. Oh, no question, without a doubt. <laughs> John Stockton a little guilty of a foul on the perimeter. Too much pressure on the ball. So we take a look from one half to the next. 63% in the first half for the select team, just 29 in the second half. It gets tougher. He may have missed it, but Carl Malone just tapped Brevin Knight as a result of that foul between he and John Stockton. Carl Malone with a big rebound in traffic. Now Reggie Miller, he's been cold. He's on top, and now John Stockton will look to the Admiral in the post. Well, the offense is starting to settle down, and the ball is going to start being worked out from the low post to the outside. Reggie Miller on the drive, goes glass with the left. Reggie's been quiet all afternoon, but uh, he saw a golden opportunity to get to the basket and had to go to his offhand and turns his left hand and was able to get the layup. Another select team turnover. Up ahead, the ball was tipped away by Brevin Knight, and the Dream Team will maintain possession. You see that little fake there? Reggie Miller is a very lanky type of player, and he has the ability to come at you and then at the last moment change directions and shoot the ball off the glass. Great slashing movement there. Now Grant Hill posting up and goes glass on Shea Seals. It's nice to see Grant Hill um, on the floor at this juncture of the game with 4.19 left in the second half. 
And John Stockton called for a blocking foul as he tried to disrupt the play of Brevin Knight. Well, the Dream Team is leading by seven points, and with the defensive pressure that they're exerting uh, on the defensive end of the floor, they may have an opportunity to, to open this lead up a bit more. Good look at Grand Hill playing on his home floor. Freshman and sophomore season at Duke University, national champion for those great teams that Mike Krzyzewski had as Brevin Knight hits the first of two free throws. As the select team is now shooting the bonus, that's another difference between NBA and NCAA rules. They shoot on the eighth, on the eighth foul of the half, the bonus kicks in according to FIBA rules. Of course, in college, that is the seventh foul, and in the pros, it's per quarter on the fifth foul. Face-up jumper by Carl Malone is good. Haven't seen that one yet tonight, but seen it a few times over the last 11 years. That's the patented move by Carl Malone. If he feels he can't back you down and get into the lane, he'll turn it around and take that little fadeaway jump shot. Loose ball corralled by Grant Hill. And he's got the crowd up a little and then just a little tease. He just a little it in. baby dunk. <laughs> Open up to a nine-point lead now. You see the defensive pressure being exerted by the Dream Team. It's been very difficult for the last eight minutes for the select team to get a good shot off. Perimeter jumper no good. Here comes Reggie Miller. Open court. Throws it away. A little bit out of sync with the Admiral. You, you can see uh, David Robinson signals to Reggie Miller to lob the ball next time. And the Dream Team has responded to their 17-point halftime deficit. A big run here in the second half. They lead it now by nine. I'm Mark Brown. My partner is Bernard King. And Bernard, I'm going to give you a little bit of credit. When they were down, you said Dream Team wins this one going away by 13. It, it looks right on schedule. Yeah, they were down by nine at that point when I made that not prediction. But uh, I just thought possibly they would get back into this game. And if they did, uh, they would open up the lead long enough, big enough rather, to win it, win it possibly by 13 or 14. Well, that's why we got you here. He knows the game. 90 to 81 the score and still defensive pressure by the Dream Team. John Stockton giving Anthony Parker some problems. And I think we have to remember here, the Dream Team has not, this is the first team the Dream Team has faced. They've been practicing with one another for a week now. And they came out uh, looking a little rusty in the second half. Things has changed. And another turnover as the defensive pressure is picked up. Tim Duncan unable to control that. Entry pass from the top. Just under three minutes to play in this one. I like how controlled the Dream Team's offense half-court sets are. Uh, they're looking to complete the set. They're not taking the first available shot. They're moving the ball around a lot. And uh, they're not looking to take a bad shot. And despite the obvious advantage... Oh! Hard spill taken. Anthony Parker went down very hard on that one. Carl Malone had the up fake. You can see the concern. That's the Dream Team players. As Anthony Parker bought the up fake from Carl Malone, and when Malone went by, he kind of flipped his legs, and Parker just took a very hard spill onto his shoulders. Well, certainly, uh, no one wants anyone to get injured in this ball game. You see Carl Malone, he takes the, he takes the fake. And uh, naturally, when he brings Park up in the air, he's looking for contact at that point. And Park takes a hard, hard spill. Tough sh shot on the left shoulder, but he appears to be okay. The mailman converts from the free throw line. You know, Malone, four for five from the line today. His free throw problems in this year's postseason were well documented, but it really has overshadowed what's been a tremendous improvement in his free throw shooting from... 48% his rookie year, all the way up to as high as 77 just a couple years ago. He yeah, certainly improved. Uh, Carl Malone and Charles Barkley both have been faced with that problem in terms of uh, not very good free throw shooters. So Maurice Taylor finally hits a perimeter jumper, but the lead is nine. A turnover, a little bit sloppy. Here comes Anthony Parker, and the shot is blocked by Grant Hill. Just another facet of his complete game. Brevin Knight tries the lane kick. Shea Seals behind the arc. A rare mix for Shea Seals. Grant Hill comes up with the rebound. He takes the spill after he's able to get that rebound. Tough pass on the part of Dave Robinson trying to find Carl Malone. As we see here, Park is attacking the basket strongly. Grant Hill recovers and said, no! Let's get that out of there. Tremendous block on the part of Grant Hill. Uh, six foot eight with great wheels and great reaction. 
He moves like a track runner in terms of Grand Hill. A little more business to finish with here in their first exhibition against the U.S. Select team. The under-22 college all-stars who've put up a great fight for the majority of this game. Sorry, Mark. The dream team can relax at this point. Uh, they've come back and they've cut that deficit from 17 and they've taken the lead and they've demonstrated that, hey, we came here to win the ball game and uh, we're just glad we was able to get back into it. There's Carl Malone. You saw John Stockton earlier have to be the most enduring tandem of players in NBA recent history. As on the jump ball, violation. Stockton jumped into his man across the lane on that jump ball. Well, John Stockton uh, knew that he had no chance against uh, Revan Knight to get that jump ball, so he tried to jump into him to prevent him from getting the tap. And you should never let the choir boy looks of John Stockton fool anybody, one of the fiercest competitors, and some have labeled him maybe a little bit dirty, really will do anything in order to win. Uh, no, I think that's an unfair tag. Uh, he's, he's never been a dirty player at all. However, he's been a very aggressive, hard-nosed, physical player, and uh, that's the way you should play the game. I love seeing him go and set picks. He'll set a hard pick on anybody. doesn't matter how the size of the guy, even if it's a center. And a beautiful post-up move inside by John Stockton. Back in 1992, John Stockton was a member of the Dream Team, but he had some physical ailments, and he wasn't able to participate in as many minutes as he would have liked. So it's nice to see him come back and play on this ball club. Off the loose ball. The select team knocking down the jumper. Sneaking back into this one. It's down to seven points. Still over a minute to play. And a foul on the perimeter. Chauncey Billups picks up the foul, and Reggie Miller will go to the free throw line. He's had a tough day, as we've documented from the field. He sandwiched a three-pointer and a layup around about 12 missed perimeter jumpers. But you put him in this spot, and you just take the ball out of the net. <laughs> I look at Reggie Miller, and I remember that memorable conference finals against the New York Knicks where in the playoffs where Reggie Miller lift them up for 25 points in the fourth quarter and I was fortunate enough to be there at that ball game. I, I mean that was quite a display of shooting on the part of Reggie Miller. When he gets it going there's nothing you can do to stop him. Brevin Knight pulling up in the lane shooting it over the Admiral. I can see why uh, Brevin Knight is rated as highly as he is. Uh, he's really impressed me here tonight uh, with his all-around play, particularly his quickness and his savvy for the court and knowing where his teammates are. And he's at 5'10", he can still get a shot off. Dream team in no hurry. They use most of the clock. Shot by the Admiral is no good. And in the lane is Chauncey Billups hanging in the air. Can't get it down. Here comes the Dream Team now down to 20 seconds. Malone from Stockton around it out. And the ball's pass away. Like Duncan, John Stockton almost picked it off. So there's Mike Montgomery. Obviously a nice piece of his resume getting to coach this USA Select under 22 team. 18-year college coaching career as a head coach, first Montana and now Stanford. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that. Tremendous play. I was just saying earlier, I've been highly impressed with this young man in terms of Brevin Knight, his ability to penetrate and to find people in traffic. That was an incredible pass here behind his back. Well, he's, he is something to see. He obviously, he teamed with Deion Cross in that Stanford backcourt. An excellent one. Most of our international audience probably didn't get a big chance to see him play, but they've gotten a big look at a little man, Brevin Knight, who can do a lot of things to make his team better. Well, when you think about the, this year in terms of Iverson being selected as the first pick in the draft, is he's the shortest number one pick in NBA history. Well, it wasn't easy, but the Dream Team pulled it out in the end. As you see them... Shaking hands after the ball game with the USA under 22 select team. It was a close one, but the dream team pulls it out 96 to 90.